Welcome to Ascend, uh, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm uh, your co-host, Keith Halperin, and this is our co-host, uh, Will Bernick. Uh, today's program is Autism and Community, but before we get into that, Will, tell us about your shirt. Oh, this is my, is my newest Power Ranger shirt. I, I got this from Power Morphicon. It, it represents the, the, the first and recent team, Power Ranger team. Excellent. Thank you very much, Will. Today's first guest is Jack Fagan. Jack worked for more than 20 years in direct service, program management, and advocacy for adults with disabilities. He was co-chair of the San Francisco Mayor's Disability Council from 2004 through 2009 and was chair of ASCEND from 2002 to 2009. Welcome, Jack. Thank you, Keith. I, I often get asked, uh, what's my interest in all of this in the autism community and, and uh, in ASCEND? Um, and, uh, you know, in recent years, this term neurodiversity has come into use um, uh, more than in the, the early years of, of the of Asperger Ascend adult community. And uh, it, it's something that's being celebrated. And, and I, I think um, that without realizing it, when I came to Ascend, um, after working many years with... Um, with autistic people and people with other disabilities, that was actually my my first interest in Ascend. As I attended a conference in two thousand one, uh, an Ascend conference, and then just started attending meetings. And um, I think what fascinated me, what I was curious about, uh, was uh, neurodiversity, and uh, and being able to hear from from people at all points along the spectrum and with different gifts and different challenges, um, just uh, insights into my own ways of thinking and seeing and being in the world and, and uh, as well as informing uh, how I, I understood the clients that I worked with. And uh, that continues to this day. Uh, Really interesting. You just gave us some tantalizing hints, but I'd like you to, you know, expand a little more. And what does neurodiversity mean to you? Well, one time I was I I used the word neurotypical, uh, which for a long time is the term we use to mean not on the spectrum, uh, and I used that word to to someone who who asked me to explain it. And when I did, uh, she mentioned that that she herself has migraines, and she didn't like the word neurotypical because she said, well, I'm not neurotypical because I have migraines. And, and from that point, it occurred to me uh, that people who are left-handed are not neurotypical. Handedness is a neuro neurological phenomenon, and left-handers are in the minority, so they're not neurotypical either. And then you could go on and on with so many different uh, ways that the that our brains work and and uh, and yet the word neurotypical uh, persists to to refer to people that aren't on the spectrum so in the in the general use I would be called neurotypical however I, I realize that I have certain uh, differences in the, the way that my brain works and not claiming to be on the spectrum mm -hmm. but uh, um, my experience in ascend, and with so many people at so many different points along the spectrum, just shows me um, is just endlessly fascinating, and and to hear the the different challenges and the different talents that uh, many of my friends and and the other members of Ascend have is just uh, continues to be exciting. Interesting. You had mentioned that I think around two thousand one, you'd already been or were starting uh, mm. to work with. Um, autistic clients, what got you originally interested in working with that type of person mm -hmm. as opposed to the other types of uh, people mm -hmm. with disabilities that you may have worked with? Hmm. Um, I guess my, my career just sort of evolved uh, along a trajectory that I didn't necessarily plan. Uh, in, in college, I was um, one of those 
college students that was more of an activist than a student. And um, I, I was, um, as, a, as a, notwithstanding being a white man, mm -hmm. I, uh, I majored in psychology, but I double minored in women's studies and African-American mm -hmm. studies. Um, and then uh, along the years of my, my career, I worked for several years um, with deaf people, and uh, many of my coworkers and friends were deaf, and I got really involved in the deaf community. This was on the East Coast. So over the years, I have had the experience of being uh, participating in a number of communities that didn't necessarily weren't necessarily communities that uh, that my own experience uh, made me. A member of, but um, but I, I do think that that everyone has a responsibility, not just to any group that they belong to, but to to all of humanity. Not to be too grand, but uh, <laughs> not at all. Is that rather noble? <laughs> so so along the way, um, I. Uh, found myself working uh, more with adults with developmental disabilities. Some of them uh, had autism. And I became more interested in autism. And this was in the early 90s. Started reading, you know, of course, Temple Grandin and the, the other uh, early books. And, and then, as I said, attended the uh, SEND conference in 2001. And uh, then just got hooked. Interesting. And you'd mentioned, uh, I believe, in, in uh, our discussions here, about uh, you'd seen a number of very interesting things at the various uh, Ascend events and conferences and uh, mm -hmm. other um, autistic spectrum uh, events that you've attended over the years. Could you tell us about some of those that have been, you know, most meaningful for you? Well, in Ascend, we've been meeting every month just about uh, for, for more than 15 years. And our meetings uh, really take three forms. Some of them are parties and picnics and social events. And those are the events that, uh, that are really overwhelmingly attended by autistic people, by people on the spectrum. Um, but we also have uh, the most of our regular meetings are either discussions or presentations. And uh, while the presentations and the guest speakers that we have are, are always interesting and speak on a number of different topics, honestly, the meetings that are the most interesting to me are the discussion meetings, where there will be some topic uh, that, that whoever happens to be present and and it feels like uh, sharing will just talk about their own experience uh, or their own questions on those topics. And we've ra ranged from everything from, from uh, relationships on and off the spectrum, depression on and off the spectrum, um, coming out as Asperger's to your employer or to your colleagues or, or family, um, and, and really more topics than I can think of. But those are the most interesting to me because that's where you get to hear uh, from from all of our, our members, uh, again, on and off the spectrum, about the, the their experiences. And um, I think uh, some of our <clears throat> previous shows have discussed uh, about Ascend having three sort of uh, parts or three legs. One, that being people who themselves are on the spectrum. Two, their uh, friends, family, significant others. Mm -hmm. And three, professionals. Um, mm -hmm. And you as a professional uh, be able to, to speak more about that and how uh, that matters to you. Could mm -hmm. you elaborate a little bit on that perspective? Sure. Well, it, we, do, we have always uh, intentionally... Uh, promoted this uh, concept that we're a partnership of uh, autistic, uh, neurotypical, and then professionals. But among the professionals in the group, some are family members of, of adults on the spectrum. Some are autistic people themselves who are also 
uh, service providers of one sort or another to other other autistic people. Um, some have been guests on this show, um, but uh, as someone who was who was only in that professional category, um, it, I think I'm just going to be repeating myself. But really, to be informed not from a textbook or from a classroom or even from uh, on-the-job experience, but from people on the spectrum, autistic people speaking uh, for themselves, about themselves, and not, not for all autistic mm -hmm. people, but just sharing their own experience. If you listen to enough autistic people, you get an, a better sense of how to work with or teach or provide some other sort of services. Uh, we have some doctors and health professionals that have uh, attended a lot of our events. I think is just uh, the most uh, valuable experience that any professional working with autistic people can get is to listen to autistic people themselves. Excellent. And, and uh, how, how do you, in, in, would you encourage other members on the spectrum to follow this to, to follow the to, to follow this statement um i would encourage other professionals who who provide services to people on the autism spectrum to listen to and to to follow blogs and and social media by autistic people and autistic authors and to come to ascend to hear the first person point of view from from our members with uh, with autism, and to people on the spectrum, um, it, one of the the part of the mission of Ascend is is that uh, those of us in the sp in Ascend on and off the spectrum educate the broader public. So I would say yes, it's a it's an opportunity for people on the spectrum to to educate uh, professionals and the broader community about life on the spectrum. The name of this program. Uh, so Jack, what? How are you going to continue with the, with your campaign? Thank you for asking. That that's actually the the thing that I am most excited to talk about today is uh, the sense of community uh, in in that I've experienced in Ascend and been part of. And um, usually, whenever we use the term community for for any group, we we're we're meaning all the people that belong to that group. And that could be a dozen or thousands. And when I am talking about community in Ascend, I'm really thinking of, of something much deeper. And it struck me most uh, at Ascend's conference last October when uh, there was a panel on women on the spectrum. And two of the panelists were a woman named Georgetta, who's a former board member, and her daughter, Sabrina, or Brie. And they're both on the spectrum. And Brie, who's, who's now a woman, was just a very passionate and articulate uh, representative for, for autistic women. And, and um, I remember, uh, although Ascend is focused on, on adults, uh, at our parties and our picnics, Georgetta would bring her daughter. And this was Brie when she was a little girl. And so to see her now as, a, as an articulate uh, spokeswoman uh, for adults on the spectrum just really struck me that uh, I, I've heard so many people over the years who've talked about growing up before there was a diagnosis of Asperger's or before there was a broader understanding of what autism is. And in fact, many, many uh, of our events over the years uh, have been uh, geared towards uh, what I wish my parents knew or what I wish my teachers knew or, or looking back on um, uh, and, and, and looking forward based on, on what we have today. And here's a woman who, who grew up in a community or, or at least with uh, an, autist, an autistic adult community as a backdrop. And then at the same conference uh, was another couple that I'm 
proud to call friends, and that's uh, a couple named uh, Mike and Goody. And Mike used to come to Ascend meetings years ago. Uh, he's on the spectrum, a single guy, and then uh, he started bringing his, his then-girlfriend, Goody. And then I was very honored, along with a number of people on and off the spectrum from Ascend, to be invited to their wedding a few years ago. And then at the same conference in October, they brought their, their new baby. Oh, sweet. <laughs> it was, and he's adorable, as babies tend to be. Um, but it, it goes, it goes on. Um, uh, a couple episodes ago, uh, we featured, uh, Stacy, um, who is a, a performer, uh, and another board member on Ascend, who's in Ascend, who's on the spectrum. And, uh, at one of her shows, um, her performances, there were 10 people from Ascend who showed up. And these were people on and off the spectrum. And it just was it really heartwarming and struck me. This really is a, a community. And, um, and I, I could go on. There was uh, another member of our group, Andrew, recently moved into a new home. And, and many of us were there for his housewarming uh, party, um, and I just thought, in in all these instances, we didn't. There wasn't this deliberate intention behind anyone's attendance or participation to support anybody. We weren't at Andrew's housewarming to support him, or at Stacy's performance to support her. We were at these events. Those of us who were at any of them. Um, because we're friends and we're, um, we care about one another. And uh, without just naming another 10, 10 instances of that, uh, of that kind of experience, I could name another 10 instances, but those are some that come to mind or that were more recent. And it just, uh, it just showed me that uh, this is something really deep that... Uh, that maybe a lot of people of all kinds yearn for or may have in their lives, but it's something that's really genuine and authentic and, and exists for sure in our community in Ascend. So perhaps you could say that Ascend's greatest accomplishment so far has been really creating a sense of strong, authentic community. It has been for me. I think that's, that's been what's been most powerful for me personally and what draws me to ascend as someone who's not on the spectrum. And to be honest, I, I no longer work in uh, disability services, so, uh, so I'm not, I don't even count as the, the professional anymore. And yet, um, ascend continues to... Uh, and the wider autism community and the autism uh, social media and 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 uh, speakers uh, f and other groups far and wide. Uh, what continues to be interesting to me is just this sense of of community and and uh, identity and pride. But something uh, you and we all here can be very proud of and. I thank you very much for your time, Jack, and I know we'll be hearing a lot more from you. Thank, thank you for being with us on the show today. We were glad to interview you. Thank you again, Will and Keith. In our next segment, we'll be uh, featuring uh, lead program coordinator of Best Buddies, Kristen Reeves, and our Best Buddies uh, ongoing correspondent, John Hammond. Will? Thank you, Keith. Kristen. How long have you been in Best Buddies? Well, I've worked for Best Buddies a year and a half, and I have been involved with Best Buddies since I was a senior in college, so about three years. And tell us about, about, about the Best Buddies conferences. Um, Best Buddies does two conferences, one's for staff, and we do that so we can be trained every year. 
And then we also do a student conference where over 2,000 people come from all over the world and come to learn about Best Buddies, how to be involved with Best Buddies, and how to be an advocate for disability awareness. And how and uh, how, how, how often are these conferences held? Twice a year. So staff goes in January and learns, and then students go in July to Bloomington, Indiana to learn about being an advocate for Best Buddies. And... Uh, and uh, what, what is your job in Best Buddies? So I manage all the programs in Northern California, so all the school programs where we have our one-to-one -one friendships. I go around and make sure that they're being run correctly and that friendships are actually being made and maintained. But we also have a couple other things that Best Buddies does as well. Would you like me to talk about them? I, I'd love to. <laughs> please, please elaborate. Okay, so we also have our jobs program, which you are a part of, right? Right. And so you learn how to do a job at a law firm downtown. So we have a job program that provides um, white collar jobs for people with disabilities and job coaching. We also have an advocacy program that John, you're a part of. Yep. And we teach self advocacy and speech writing and networking skills for people with disabilities as well. And uh, uh, how many members do you have every year? Right now we have over a thousand school friendship participants in Northern California, but our reach is international and we include um, families and friends of people as well that are involved in our program. So the number is just growing every year. And, uh, and uh, do, you, do you support the Best Buddies programs in, in other schools? Well, I support all 24 schools in Northern California and then I know people at all different schools across the country. So I kind of do, and I think we all kind of are on one team and trying to make Best Buddies be the best it can be and eventually not have to be in schools and just kind of be natural. So I would say I do support other school programs as well, but I physically go to the 24 schools in Northern California. And uh, is there any way you... Do you, do you encourage uh, encourage our viewers to join to be in Best Buddies? I do, and there are a lot of ways you can be involved with Best Buddies. You can either join a club at your school, you can get involved with our community groups and help us out at our different events, and you, if you are looking to hire someone and you are willing to kind of work with our jobs program, we're always looking for people in that way too. There are a lot of ways to get involved with Best Buddies. And even just supporting and spreading the word and talking about friendship is really the, one of the best ways that we can get Best Buddies out there. Thank you, Kristen. You're welcome, Well, So Kristen, how did you originally get involved in Best Buddies? You mentioned you got involved as a senior in, in college. What made you attracted to them? Well, I've been working with people with disabilities for a long time, since I was probably like a freshman in, in high school like so I've been kind of exposed to it and then best buddies I kind of was involved my sophomore junior year but really was in a one a strong one-to-one -one friendship my senior year of college so mm -hmm. I just kind of was attracted to the idea of like being friends and just having a good time with someone regardless of what their strengths or weaknesses are and then that kind of led me forward into now working for best buddies <laughs> excellent so what, what are the biggest challenges you've seen over the years, um, both in the disability community overall and also in Best Buddies, either in a you know, uh, organizational capacity or as now as a paid employee? I think in the disability community, the hardest thing is not having avenues to express your voice and your own concerns. And that's definitely something that's changing and there's a lot more opportunity too, like to voice what your concerns and what you care about. This show is a good example of that. But I think that's been the biggest thing I've seen is that ha everyone has a voice and it's just learning how to use it. And there's not a lot of programs that allow that to happen. And that's something nice that Best Buddies is working towards that advocacy and not even just speaking, but also written advocacy, writing your senators mm -hmm. that we're really trying to formulate it so everyone can have their own voice. I think the biggest challenge within Best Buddies itself is that I mean, I, there's just a lot of schools that could really utilize our programs. There's a lot of people that could utilize our jobs program, but we just don't have enough people to mm -hmm. support it. So it's we're stretched pretty thin from time to time, and it's 
we have a great team in Northern California and across the whole country, but I mean, our office right now is growing and we have a lot more things half like big things happening, but it definitely is just, there's just a lot of needs that we can't always meet because we're human beings, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's definitely a good challenge. It's a good challenge to know that there is a want for our programs to keep growing. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you have a lot of needs uh, for our listeners, if they were able to help with them, as Will had mentioned, there are a lot of different ways. What would you say the top three ways that our uh, listeners and viewers would be able to help Best Buddies? I think the biggest, one of the biggest ways is to just have patience in your everyday life. Um, and this is not even just Best Buddies, but we encounter people every day that might just be doing things a little bit differently. and at Best Buddies, we're trying to really cultivate an environment that allows patience and understanding. And I think allowing that to be how you approach everyone in the community is really helpful for us and to know that our programs are starting to succeed. I think the really Best Buddies oriented is if you're interested in getting involved with a school, a school friendship program, for example, letting us know and we'll help you try to make those basic steps. Because if you're willing to do it in the school, we're willing to do it and work with you. Um, another big thing is if you're, again, like your company is willing to hire and wanting to bring someone on, we have a different couple different ways of going about it, but we definitely want to see our job program expand as well. And it's a great, um, it's a great way to get your work environment to change a little bit and be a little bit more inclusive and then giving someone else an opportunity. And then I think the biggest, the other big thing is just like just listening and following us and kind of like our social media following is pretty big so just kind of being involved in that way if you don't want to really contribute monetarily but you want to be involved and understand what's going on and be supportive in that sense we have a lot of big events coming up so it's definitely just following along and spreading the word about what we're doing excellent um you mentioned uh, big events coming up. Could you tell us about some of those? Yeah, so we have our friendship walk coming up on April 18th at Chrissy Field. Um, John, I think you're probably talking about that eventually. Yes, oh. so Keith. <laughs> but um, the location now is going to be the east end of the airfield mm -hmm. for the walk, which is right next to Sports Basement. And it's going to be a 5K walk, and they're going to walk to the bridge and back. Yeah, so our walk is... A very short walk it's not too strenuous for anyone that's worried about that it is ada accessible so we will be able to have you know, wheelchairs out there if you are utilizing any other ways of getting around we'll have that ability as well and it's a great day it's a fun day it's our biggest fundraiser but it's also our biggest celebration of everything we do for best buddies so we have all our programs are represented there and it's really just it's a really great way to just celebrate friendship, celebrate inclusion, and celebrate the future of what we can achieve in Northern California. Excellent. And when is that again? April 18th at Christie Field. Um, now, Kristen, you had mentioned earlier that you have an advocacy program, mm -hmm. and John, you were, uh, are involved in that. Could uh, both of you tell us more about the advocacy yeah, program? Yeah, for an advocacy for Best Buddies, you get to go to speaking, different speaking events. And do a speed trick. Will got to do that at USF. Yeah, so our advocacy program, um, we're kind of expanding it and really cultivating it to be a little bit more well rounded because being an advocate is not just, you know, speaking, but it's also being involved in your community and really taking that initiative. So we do offer our annual ambassador training. Um, that will that happened already, actually it happened last week a couple weeks ago. But we, we do teach that and that's our basic speech writing. We all we went back to basics this year, it was our fifth one. Everyone rewrote their speeches and presented. And so, yeah, John is right. We do offer speaking engagements around California and different events. So if your company is looking to get involved or our schools, that's usually where we utilize our ambassadors. A lot of it, though, is leadership development. So both for people with and without disabilities, it's a lot of leadership development skills. And that comes, into again, to our ambassador program. But we're looking to kind of expand it, make it more inclusive, maybe doing more like resume building and networking and communication. So it's definitely changing. It's one of our newer pro, not newer, but it's definitely one of our um, ever changing programs and kind of just based off the interests that our ambassadors have. But it's a really cool program. It's one of my favorites to be involved with. And I really enjoy working with everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good week and we'll see you then. See you next time. <laughs>